Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Grandpa stole his first buddy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma, Big Sloppin, in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. And welcome to America's Family History Show. It's Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this segment of the show is brought to you by Vivid Picks. Take the Vivid Picks fix. Ten free pictures with one click of a button. You're going to love what it does for your old photographs that are faded and the colors gone and all of that. Well, coming up a little later on today, we've got a great guest on, one of the iconic people in the field of family history research and genealogy. His name is Dick Eastman. He's been known for decades for his online genealogical newsletter. We're going to talk about some of the the big things that happened this year. What were the biggest topics of conversation and cover that? Plus, we're going to talk to Tom Perry a little bit because this is our final show for this year. We're going to take a break and share some classic best of shows for the next couple of weeks. So I know you're going to enjoy that. Right now, let us check in with David Allen Lambert. He is the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org in Boston, Massachusetts. David, how's your holiday shaping up? I've already had my genealogical Christmas fish. Really? I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I went out to an archive that I visited back when I was in my 20s. And uh, back then, you couldn't use a digital camera. Well, because we didn't have them. I had to make notes, couldn't photocopy this. And I revisited the Revolutionary War Diary of my fourth great-grandfather. And I got a surprise. They said, did you know that we have his military commissions? Wow. I almost cried. Oh, my gosh. And you got to hold these things? I did, yeah. One of them dates from 1772 when he was in the colonial militia under Thomas Hutchinson. And the other two were when he was in the Massachusetts troops during the Revolutionary War, his commission as captain. And I thought they burned. A long time ago. Oh, because his house burned down at some point? Mm Mm-hmm. And they were squirreled away. And all of this plus over 500 photographs I took. Oh, my gosh. In the archive. All right. We're not going to have time to get into all this right now. We're going to have to do a whole segment on that when we get back after the beginning of the year, okay? Sounds good to me. I want to hear about all that because it sounds like you just, you struck gold, sir. I did. Genealogical goals. All right. Let's move on with our family histoire news. What do you have for us today? Well, this one is a little fishy. It might have to do with a fisherman. Well, an old fisherman, in fact. 500 years ago, a gentleman with long boots fell into the Thames. And guess what? They just found him while they were doing excavations for a new sewage treatment plant in London. Yeah, he's wearing the boots that he had on him when he went down, and uh, he's laying there right in the mud. Wow. Uh, it's fascinating because I think the DNA would be a good thing, and who knows? They may find a match in flushing the urine. <laughs> Sorry. <That's> terrible. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. In Poland in 2023, on the 80th anniversary of the Jewish uprising at the Warsaw Ghetto, there will now be a museum, a museum to the Holocaust right there in Warsaw, which I think is a fitting memorial yes. to the individuals who are lost. You know, a fascinating story I saw in Extreme Genes is about an Arizona judge named Randall Howe. Randall was an adopted child, came from Oregon. Now he knows percentages of how much Norwegian, Swedish, English, and Irish that he is. But what he does talk about is that even though he has the genetics from his biological parents, what made him who he is today and his personality really comes down to his adopted family who shaped who he is. You know, isn't it interesting? I know so many adopted people 
And so many of them have different views of the whole thing as to what family they belong to. Some of them had a bad experience with their adopted family. And then they connect with the birth family and they identify more with the birth family. And then there are others like Judge Howe who just says, you know, it's great. I've met my birth family and I realize, wow, how blessed I was that my real family were the people who were there for me, who fed me, who paid for me to grow up and got me an education and and watched over me and nurtured me. That's what a family is. And that's kind of how he feels about it. In fact, we talked to Scott Hamilton, remember, last year at Mm -hmm. Roots Tech, and he said the same thing. He was going to get his birth family revealed to him, and he thought it was going to be interesting, but he said it's not going to be life-changing because my family are the people who raised me. And obviously it wasn't because you don't hear any follow-up news stories about a reunion or anything. No, that's right. Yeah, and sometimes it is a private reveal, as it was for Scott, and the public does not find out, which is probably fitting. Yep. Well, exciting news from Boston at New England Historic Genealogical Society. As we close out one year, we open up a new chapter of our history. We have the Shamrock Genealogist under our roof. You remember Melanie McComb, who we've had on the show before? Yes, she's Uh, the the Irish genealogist. She has great information for Irish research for people, and now she's going to work with you guys? She is, yeah. We adopted the Shamrock genealogist as part of our crew. (laughs) She is now a genealogist on the staff of NEHGS, and I'm delighted that she is now with us. She also brings the knowledge of Canadian, Irish, as well as half of her heritage, which is Jewish. We didn't have anybody on the staff that specialized in that until now. That's awesome stuff. Congratulations, Melanie. Well, our blogger spotlight shines on Vera Miller has a really interesting blog called lostrussianfamily.wordpress.com. Now, Vera wrote about an exciting topic. Apparently, the Russian government has declassified over 3 million records of political terror victims back under the days of Stalin when people were sent to the Gulag. Yeah, one of her ancestors was, and she found the records. And the government of Russia, through email, has released the records to her. Wow. That's incredible. How many is this covering in this file? Three million people. Wow. Plus. So that's an interesting, might be a good story for extreme genes to follow up on. Yep. Well, that's all I have from Beantown. And to wrap up the year, don't forget, if you are looking to join NEHGS American Ancestors, you can save $20, as always, by using the coupon code EXTREME on checkout on AmericanAncestors.org. All right, David. Thank you so much. And before we go, we got to mention this. Patricia Heaton. You know her from Everybody Loves Raymond. She has been announced as one of the keynote speakers at the Roots Tech Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming up at the end of February. And uh, hopefully we can get her on the show. So we're going to work on that as well. Thanks so much, David. Congratulations on your huge find. And I look forward to hearing more about that in the new year. Happy New Year, my friend, and to all the listeners out there. All right, David. And coming up next, we'll talk to Dick Eastman about what he sees as the big story of 2018 in family history research. Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. And here we go. Another new year of discovering and preserving and sharing. And now that so many of you have taken advantage of the Vivid Picks gift idea, you know that Restore from Vivid Picks is going to be one of your most important tools in preservation. For just $49.99, this incredible software can forevermore restore your photographs with just one click. And I'm talking about photos where the color is gone and they've faded away. And you want those incredible memories back. You just scan your picture run it through Restore, and bam, you've got nine options to choose from as your best photo. So if you're one of those people who's a little bit technically challenged, and many people are, this is an incredible way to go. $49.99, and that's not just for one year, that's forevermore. And by the way, it works on documents as well. If you can't read a special document, just run it through Restore, and everything that document has to reveal is yours. Click on the link to Vivid Picks through our website, ExtremeGenes.com. Did you know that FamilySearch Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings 
settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Hey, we're back at it. It's Extreme Genes, America's family history show and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher at this end, your radio root sleuth. And I'm talking to Dick Eastman. And in the field of genealogy, he's one of the best known people because for almost 23 years now, his online genealogy newsletter is kind of, what would I call it, the hallmark, Dick, of genealogy newsletters. You have more stories than I think anybody, and I think a lot of people find a lot of material through your newsletter. Well, I I appreciate the comment. I'm a little flattered you use that word hallmark. That's not one I would use, but it sounds real good to me. But if you don't mind, maybe I'll steal that and use it in my advertising. There you go. Put it in there. It's a quote (laughs) right from Extreme Genes. You know, I I wanted to get you on because you have a great background in privacy and encryption. And I don't think a lot of people know that. I certainly didn't until recently. But you actually do a blog, a separate one on privacy, and I think the number one story of 2018 is this whole debate about ethics and privacy relating to the police cases and the Golden State Killer case and Jed Match. Fill us in on your thoughts on this, uh, because I know you go way back with this. Yeah, that's true. And my thoughts are too many people are ignoring too many things. A little bit of background is that I started this genealogy uh, newsletter or blog, whatever you wish to call it, almost 23 years ago. But I have a background in encryption when I was in the military, and various issues about privacy kind of upset me from time to time. And I know there are solutions to many of these things. So one day I decided I'd start a blog talking about privacy. And lo and behold, over the next two or three or four years, my two interests of genealogy and privacy started to come together, which I had not planned on. And now there are big issues in both of those, both in the genealogy world and people who are concerned about privacy. So with that, I can say I I certainly have interest in them. I do publish quite a bit about it. In the privacy world, I tend to talk more about ways to protect your privacy, and there are some simple methods that won't protect it 100%, but they certainly will reduce your exposure. Hmm. So, yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. You know, with the Jed Match thing, and this is a question I ask everybody about, do you think, first of all, because of all this, we're seeing a reduction in the number of people doing DNA testing out of fear of some kind of exposure with the police or the authorities or whatever it may be tying into these cases, such as Golden State Killer? I I think the quick answer to that, it's a combination of all of the above. Things tend to go in cycle. There's been a lot of buzz on the television lately about DNA and DNA testing. So a number of people get interested. But I think that certain types of people get interested. They move on it. Those who have a natural curiosity, they go out and they sign up for these low-cost kits. They do it. And then What do you do after that? Well, there's not as much. It's not an ongoing thing like genealogy research. My belief is the majority of people who have their DNA tested, they get the results back and they say, hey, that's neat. And then that's it. That's That's not all they do. Well, I think Uh, a good 95% of them just do it because of the ethnicity. Exactly. So the people who have that kind of curiosity, I think probably 50, 75, maybe 90% of them have already done it. 
And there are other people who really don't care or don't have the funds for the test or whatever will probably never do it. Mm -hmm. And that's just human nature. I don't see that as being anything good or bad. It's just what it is. I'm not surprised. So that's one of the factors. Now, on top of that, there's no doubt that people are afraid of cracking by governments or corporations or whatever. I always like to use the example of the insurance company. Do I really want my health care provider to know what kind of inherited diseases I might be susceptible to? And I don't know the answer to that, but it's a very interesting question. And and how would they get that? You know, I'm just really curious about that, Dick. I know a lot of people have brought that up, and I'm thinking, is this something where they could pass legislation that says we can access your, your, obviously it would be through 23andMe because none of the others really provide that kind of information. Well, we tend to think about 23andMe and Family Tree DNA and the other people that deal with the uh, genealogy world. But they're actually only a small number of the DNA providers. There are many corporations out there who are tracking DNA or testing it for other factors besides genealogy, and particularly for inherited medical conditions. There's one advertisement out that says they can recommend diets for you based upon your uh, your DNA heritage. I'm not sure I really believe that, but I thought it was an interesting advertisement. I don't think I, so I don't either. I have the medical background to say yes or no, but I just made my eyebrows go up a little bit sure. when I read that. But again, we in the genealogy world tend to focus only on the DNA companies that deal with the genealogy world. And in fact, there are more of them. And there are more issues that many of us are ignoring these days. And I think we do need to pay attention to the big picture. So from the genealogy standpoint, then, do you feel that there's a way, for instance, for insurance companies to get a hold of your information that you have on 23andMe? I think the answer for 23andMe specifically is no, not at this time, unless they, for an insurance company, they probably will not. A government agency probably could get hold of it with a court order. Mm -hmm. So there are those issues. Now, I lead a pretty public life. I don't really have a lot of information that I want to hide and keep secret. Sure. But it just irritates me that some of the things that happen out here. And if I do happen to have an inherited disease, do I want that information to become public? But I will say I'm uncomfortable with it, yes. Right. And that might prevent you from uh, actually testing or something if you were one of those who has not yet tested. Well, yeah, I'll put a little side comment here. I've been tested so far by five different companies. And so far, I've got three different results. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, as far as uh, ethnicity goes? Yeah, well, in my case, well, they all sort of agree, but boy, the percentages were way off. Sure. Uh, they were very different. So what would you say was the biggest thing in DNA, other than the privacy issues, in terms of uh, DNA testing itself? What was the big thing this year? Well, in the news stories, I think we have to very quickly talk about the use of DNA data by law enforcement to identify criminals. Right. And this is a story that gets me very uncomfortable because I literally see two sides to this argument, and I think they both have a lot of validity and they both have some risk. When you can go into a publicly accessible database, I say you, but anybody who is law enforcement or working for a law enforcement agency go into publicly available data and search and find relatives of a criminal. And in most of the cases been in the news were very serious criminals. We're not talking about right. theft here. No. But it makes me wonder, is can they also find people who have political beliefs one way or the other? If your relatives all live in areas known to be conservative or liberal or something, can they, the authorities, make an accurate determination of the likelihood of your political leanings and things of that sort? And we get into these issues of Big Brother. You know, George Orwell was a little ahead of his time, but many of the things he wrote about are becoming valid. Yeah, I, I wonder if that would actually tie into DNA testing, because I think there are probably so many better ways to uh, to determine political stuff. OK, I, 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 I see what you're saying, but I think this conversation has, revolves more about the access to public databases. Mm. There's all sorts of databases out there. There's a phrase that I'm familiar with called big data, where corporations just simply record all sorts of information. Some of this information they will probably never use, but they record it anyway, just in case. And then as the years go by, they start combing through here, looking for certain patterns and likelihood of this or that. And I think it becomes very invasive. I think sure. this really gets into a, uh, a George Orwell situation. Big Brother is watching you. So when it comes to DNA... Is that good or is that bad? Well, I'm frightened by it because you don't know what you don't know, right? What they could ultimately right. exactly. do with it. Yep. But at the same time, you don't want to live your life in fear 
where when Mm -hmm. people know what it is we like and what we want and they offer it to us, is that a bad thing? You know what I mean? So you're right. I mean, it's really quite a challenge. I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Yeah, and that, um, that's kind of where, where the challenge is. What else, what would you say among the genealogical testing companies do you think was the biggest advance this past year? Well, I think, well, I'm not just sure about specific companies, but the fact that the data can be uh, combined into this thing called GEDmatch, their results can be combined. And here's where I have really divided feelings about this. I'll take the example with the first one that well publicized was the Golden State Killer where they had DNA information about a person who had committed multiple murders, and they analyzed that DNA information, and then these experts combed through some databases, primarily GenMatch, and found people who were closely related to the criminal. And with that, using traditional law enforcement research techniques, they went out and started interviewing all these people who were apparently closely related and eventually narrowed it down to the person who committed the crimes. That person was not listed as Jed Match himself, but some of his relatives were. And Mm -hmm. through a process of elimination, they they found the criminal. Now, I have great admiration for people who could do that. And I think finding murderers, mass murderers, and other violent criminals is a great service. I am totally in favor of that. And in fact, if I thought there was a chance that one of my relatives was a mass murderer, I would be the first person to go out and volunteer my DNA information to the law enforcement to help them solve the case. Sure. That's a good sign. Now, on the bad side, these same techniques can go out and identify other factors. If they've got medical information available, they can predict the people who are going to have medical problems. They're going to be able to find people who are mentally unstable, I think. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. And there's all sorts of side issues there. Do you want Big Brother, be it a corporation, a government, be it your insurance company, to be able to figure out these things and identify you through the DNA of your relatives? I don't know. I see good. I see bad. (laughs) And the hard part is, okay, the things that we're really concerned about, how do we ever roll them back? Because (laughs) all these other countries are doing this upon us as well. China, Russia, gathering information, and I'm sure many others who we've never even really thought much about. Yeah, that's true. Although many of the European countries have gotten together and have realized the danger earlier than the Americans have. And they've come out with this thing called the right to be forgotten. GDPR, yeah. And that's... GDPR led to GDPR, and uh, there's more legislation will be coming, I suspect. So the Europeans are really kind of ahead of us in those thoughts and those considerations. All right. Well, we're going to get off the GEDmatch DNA discussion here for our next segment coming up and talk okay. about <laughs> some of the big stories of the past year, some interesting discoveries, even some of the highlights from Extreme Genes, some of the guests we've had on. When we return, coming up in five okay. minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Masters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? 
that kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the grandma gap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. All right, back at it. It's Fisher here on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, talking to Dick Eastman, he of the online genealogy newsletter, talking about what's going on in the field and and what were some of the big stories in 2018. And Dick, I will always remember 2018, by the way, for the fact that I, I actually discovered that one of my ancestors was a bloodthirsty, murderous pirate. And uh, I, I really ah, wasn't oh. expecting to find that. But there it is. You, you just don't know oh. what you're going to get like a box of Cracker Jacks, right? <laughs> and those are the valuable ones. We all have farmers and small merchants and so on. And uh, kings. And obviously we must have some. But finding them and identifying them is difficult. It's a very small percentage for most people. <laughs> it yep. certainly has been in my family tree. So when you can find somebody that's unusual for some reason, to me, that's, that's a valuable treasure. And we have quite a bit of history on him and the ship he was on and the, the other ships that oh, they great. raided and all that. It was just absolutely fascinating. I, I actually wore a patch wow. for about two months this year. <laughs> <laughs> One day a year, you go around speaking like a pirate, correct? Exactly, arg. <laughs> and then I found a newspaper clipping from 1818 from Britain about how my third great-grandfather abandoned the family, and that was kind of interesting to share with some of the distant cousins mm-hmm. I've found through DNA matches. I mean, it's really a fascinating thing about how different it is today than when we first started doing this, because you can find articles and newspapers like that and then connect them to DNA matches and contact those people anywhere in the world. I mean, it's it's just so entirely different from uh, the beginning in the 80s and 90s for me that I'm just delighted in the world we live in when it comes to this kind of research. Well, I have to agree with you. I started in the 80s myself, and we did it manually and had to go look up in books or original records and Write letters. Oh, yes. I remember writing letters. Yeah, yes. Okay. And we get more done in a much shorter period of time than we used to. That's absolutely true. One of my favorite interviews this past year was for those following the podcast, episode 244, involved these two women who live right next door to each other. One moved in. The other had been there for many, many years, and, and, and the one had been adopted, and they, they ultimately found out they were sisters, and they share a driveway, yeah. which is absolutely insane. Uh, <laughs> And I'm sure you had that story oh, as well. And that's oh, yes. that's the beauty of all this, that we can put these things together. It is Well, it's exciting right now because it's a new frontier for us. But I'm going to say what, what happens as the technology improves and more and more data becomes available conveniently, what happens when we can find all this information in a matter of minutes? Is genealogy still going to be as interesting as it used to be? You know, you're right, because I think much of the joy is solving the mystery, right? You solve a puzzle. I find that fascinating. It's a great thing to do. It's to go through this puzzle-solving process. It's intriguing to, to sit there and do the detective work. It is. But, you know, what happens, like you say, when it's all put together, we have so much information that pretty much anybody can know immediately what their lines are. And, and you mentioned to me off-air that you've run into that situation in Iceland. Yes, Iceland is a fascinating country for a whole bunch of reasons, but for a genealogist, it's really interesting in that they pretty much have their family trees traced back into the Middle Ages. They have most all of the birth, marriage, and death records of everybody who lived in Iceland, most of them going back into the late 800s A.D. (laughs) Uh, They they will admit from about 850 to around 1200, there were a few people were missing. That escaped. After 1200, they have all of them. And... They're online. You've got to wonder who back around 800 decided this would be a good thing to do. And obviously it has been. And this person's idea here almost 1,200 years later is still going on. 
Right. Well, it was decided, I understand, by the church, because they only want Icelandic citizens to marry good members of the church. And it's uh, very common throughout all the Scandinavian countries. And, of course, the people who arrived in Iceland in the 850s came from the Scandinavian countries. Sure. So they brought that tradition with them. But the fun thing is, not only are these records online, you do not have to go through and look at individual census records or birth and marriage records manually and put together your own family tree. The family trees have actually been computerized. All you have to do is go in, and you don't use your name, because in Iceland, almost everybody has the same names. Yeah. It's kind of interesting (laughs) to their patronymic naming system. They still do not use their father's surname. Your name is uh, William and you are the son of John, uh, your name is William Johnson. Right. And that's the way it was in, in many countries many years ago, but it's still that way today in Iceland. Anyway, you go onto a computer app. I've seen this thing run in a cell phone, and you type in your identification number. That's sort of the Icelandic equivalent of a social security number. And it comes back, and there's a number of options to display, and then you pick off the things on the menus, and you can see your entire family tree going back to the 800s. Probably takes a minute, maybe two minutes to do this. <laughs> so there's no mystery solving no. here. There's no puzzle solving. There's, there's no puzzle. And in my mind, it takes all the fun out of it. Sure. So if we look at the history of genealogy and how the technical advances, and then we try to apply that to our thoughts of what's the future going to be like, I see sooner or later, probably not in my lifetime, but eventually all the records will be pretty much identified. They will be tied together. And I'm thinking... 50, 100 years from now, people in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and elsewhere will be able to just look on their personal digital assistant or whatever. Sure, some device. And they'll say, Alexa, show me my family tree. And it'll come back. (laughs) My Alexa device just woke up. Uh, But but I think in the near future, 50 or 100 years from now is near future as far as genealogists are concerned. I think this is going to happen. Now, my question is, Where's the fun in this? Yeah. Will anybody care? Mm-hmm. In Iceland, they don't seem to do it. I talked to a lot of people in Iceland. Every, almost every Icelandic citizen that I met and I had a chance to talk with for a few minutes, I asked them about this. Not one of them ever said that they were genealogists. Not one of them could name a family member of theirs who was a genealogist in the family. It's just common knowledge. Wow. And they have this, this new app, right, for dating. What's this thing called? Bump? Bump. <laughs> Bump. The title of it is an Icelandic word, which I could not possibly pronounce. But I'm told the uh, English translation of that word is bump. And the way this works is that two individuals who want to see if they're related can bump their phones together to find out. I should point out that in Iceland, everybody is related to almost everyone else. Right. Because there's only something like half, two-thirds of a million people. They've been living on this small island for well over a thousand years. So, you know, the family trees have a huge amount of pedigree collapse. The humorous story was told to me is that over the years, there have been cases where people have actually gone out and gotten married and started families, and then later found out the husband and wife were a little closer related than they had realized. Yeah. Of course, that leads into all sorts of medical problems which is why the DNA experts like to use Iceland as a test for everything. But the fun thing with this app is the most common application is if a young man and a young woman meet and they get kind of interested in each other and the relationship becomes somewhat romantic, they are told to bump their phones. That is, they both load the same app into their telephones and then they bump them together. The two phones that bump together at the same instant come back and will display on the screens of both phones the relationship of those two individuals. And there will be one. And it might be. No, oh, absolutely. In fact, there's probably to be five or ten relationships. Yeah. Now, I assume that they're organized <laughs> by the closest ones first. The uh, interesting part of this to me is the uh, advertising for this company that produces the software. They call it the application Bump. And their slogan is, uh, before you bump in bed... Bump your phones. (laughs) I love it. He's Dick Eastman. He's the man behind Eastman's online genealogical newsletter. Uh, Dick, thanks so much for your time. Have a great 2019. (laughs) Thanks for sharing that and uh, and your insight. Absolutely. Aren't we all, right? We're going to hopefully keep this thing growing and uh, having a lot of fun with it. And we'll talk to you again soon. See you at Roots Tech. All right. I'll be there. I'll look for you. Thanks a lot, Scott.
And coming up next, how can you create a free last-minute family history Christmas gift? Rick Voigt from Vivid Picks has some ideas on the way in three minutes on Extreme Genes. Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now, you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Ever wonder where you got your bright green eyes or your infectious laugh? Thanks to technology, discovering your family story has never been easier. And we're bringing it all together at Roots Tech, the world's largest family history conference. Registration for Roots Tech 2019 is open. Join us February 27th through March 2nd for this incredible four-day event at the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Learn from over 300 classes on topics such as DNA, capturing family stories, and preserving legacies. For a limited time, take advantage of promotional pricing. Purchase a four-day pass for only $209 if you register before January 25th. That's $90 off a regularly priced pass. Explore over 200 exhibits in the Expo Hall and interact with the latest technology. Join the excitement. Join the fun. Discover your family. Discover yourself. Discover Roots Tech. February 27th through March 2nd at the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Register today at RootsTech.org. Hey, Genies, Fisher here with a shout out to our Patrons Club members at Patreon.com slash Extreme Genes. This is where friends of the show support Extreme Genes for as little as a dollar a month all the way up to the cost of a very nice burger each month. I mean, a really juicy one. You can support the show and enjoy various special Patrons Club member benefits, such as acknowledgement on ExtremeGenes.com, special bonus podcasts from expert guests like Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, C.C. Moore, your genetic genealogist, great storytellers and experts on record sets from all over the world. We even offer expert advice on specific questions challenging your research. So go to patreon.com slash extreme genes and get signed up. We love sharing your genealogical journey with you on our Extreme Genes Patrons Club. After all, what would you rather have, inspiring and informative content or another greasy burger? The choice is yours. And thanks for supporting Extreme Genes. Hey, it is time to talk preservation on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. Very excited to have my good friend Rick Voigt from Vivid Picks on the line right now. He and his buddy Randy are longtime photo geeks going back to their days at Kodak. And uh, they've created this amazing product, as we've been telling you about for a long time now, called Restore. It's from Vivid Picks. And uh, this is just, it's a one click solution for fixing your faded, discolored, lack of contrast photographs to bring back those incredible memories and uh, rick here we are you're traveling you've been on the road now you're down in florida visiting your parents how's it going it's going great it was great seeing you a couple of weeks ago and and have you gotten all your holiday stuff done through all this traveling that's my question how do you do it (laughs) i am trying hard but in fact the the good thing with memories and with photos is you can do a lot of it on your computer so yeah I'm, i'm actually going to be giving my mom a very special gift this year for Christmas. Very nice. Is it, is it anything we can talk about, or is she going to listen in? Well, I will try to keep her away. She does love <laughs> you, but yeah. So what, what we did was I took some of our old Christmas cards, and I scanned them and have improved them with the Vivid Picture Store software. And I've made enlargements, both square, smaller ones, as well as an enlargement of one of them for her to be able to remember what my sister and I looked like back 50 years ago. 
Wow. I had never thought about that. That would be a great thing to do to create a card from your old cards from way back when, right? Well, not everyone has thought about it, and I haven't thought about it. So how would I help other people kind of have the recipe to do so? So created a blog, and we'll link to it out of Extreme Genes. Yep. And that way we're able to have folks be instructed how to pull out their old photos scan them, whether it's on their all-in-one printer that they've got in their office or any other scanner that they have, download a free trial of the Vivid Fix Restore software so you get 10 free fixes, no credit card required, and then fix their photo and then print it. They can print it on their home printer or walk into their local drugstore or whatever is the easiest way for them to be able to have a great gift created here in just a few minutes. Well, I did see the blog. What I like about it is it's kind of like a recipe book. You know, I mean, it is step by step and it's so stupid easy. And that's what I've always appreciated about the software just to begin with. You know, I'm thinking even as you talk, okay, what what do we have? And I have one, I think, from like 60 years ago, <laughs> my brother and myself. Dating yourself. Dating yeah. myself. And I still have this ceramic Santa Claus that our picture was taken with back in the day. It would be kind of fun to do a then and now with the same piece, you know, and because we haven't done our cards yet as of this weekend. So this is one of those last minute scrambles and all our friends are going to be getting them in the mail late. But what a great idea. And it's something I would have never thought of. I'm glad that we're talking and we're sharing it with others as well. That's cool. Yeah, well, it's simple and inexpensive, too, and that that's the thing. The other aspect is then you can take that and work that through the various card companies, too, after you've repaired the picture and, and you put it up there. Absolutely. So whether you walk into your local store or go online, and, you know, we haven't talked about it much on this show, but we have Vivid Picks Prints. So we have a processing lab that is a professional lab that we print very high-quality stuff through. So we can do it for you, too. I had no idea about that. All right, great stuff. Well, Rick, you have a a great holiday season with your family. You got your your wife and kids coming down as well? Well, actually, we're going to be spending actual Christmas up in in Charleston, so that'll be nice. And so I wanted to make sure I was seeing the folks here for a few days and tied a little business and pleasure together, and we'll be back in Charleston. Sweet. Well, great stuff. Uh, Best to Randy as well. And uh, thanks so much for all you guys are doing to make it so much easier for everybody to preserve their pictures and bring them back to life. It's just, it's such a great piece of software. Thanks, Rick. And we'll talk to you again soon. Scott, the best to you and your family. Take care. And we'll talk to Tom Perry coming up next on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmaster's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. 
Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for The Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Gene's Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie. Here we go. Coming up on our final segment of our final episode of 2018. Over the next couple of holiday weekends, you'll be uh, catching some classic episodes, some of our best of from 2018 on Extreme Genes. And Tom Perry is here. He is our preservation authority, but of course, and Tom, you've got two special apps that are on your mind at this point with the holidays right upon us. Yeah, they're really, really great. So many times we want to do things, we want to record things, we just don't do them. There's an app that's called Voice Memos, which is absolutely awesome. You can just turn it on and at your dinner table or just having some friends over, just lay it on an end table and let it run and record the stuff that everybody's going to be saying. You can turn it into MP3s, do whatever you want with it, edit it. It makes it really, really easy to use. And a lot of times people, they want photos and they want to be able to get them out of somebody's albums. They don't want to let them go. They don't have extra copies. They have Christmas cards. You can get a scanner program that's just an app that's called Scanner 4, F-O-R, and just go to the App Store or the Android Store and download it, and you can hold it up to a Christmas card, a photograph, anything you want, and make nice photos of it. And then you've got all these things without having to worry about, hey, you know, can I borrow the negatives? Can I take it down to the Photoshop? You can do these things. And with the new iPhones and Androids, the resolution is incredible. And this will so get things organized for you for Christmas. And then you can make it as a gift for them the next year. Well, that's a great idea. So we got two of them. It's Voice Memos. And the other is Scanner 4, F-O-R. You know, you were telling me off air how you save all your Christmas cards. Now, I, I don't know that I'd go that far. I do save a few of them physically, you know, from uh, important people in our lives or special messages or if something's really exceptionally pretty. But most of them, you know, we have to move along with. But what a great thing to do if you're looking to clear out old file cabinets, right? Lots and lots of old documents and records that you may not wish to keep physically and you can't find anybody to take or maybe even an archive isn't going to be that interested in them. Take these uh, images with this particular app. Oh, yeah. Like when I travel with bands and stuff and get backstage passes, I get postcards, all kinds of stuff. I had boxes and boxes of this stuff. And I thought, I never opened these boxes. So I went and scanned them all. And now I have them in my phone. I threw away several boxes. And now every once in a while, I just get nostalgic and go back and swipe through the photos. And it makes it so cool. And Christmas cards, there might be a nice little message, like you mentioned. Or there might just be a wonderful, beautiful photo on it. think, wow, this is nice. I'd love to use this as my screensaver during Christmas. You know, and you've got it. You know, these are two apps. There are many, many others also that can apply for family history and preservation, Tom. And there are many others also for voice. The iPhone just has its own recorder, but I don't think it's nearly anything as good as this one. Exactly. And the best thing that I say to people is go to your favorite app store and just do a search. I'm looking for an audio program, a recorder program, a scanner, a photo, and just go through and read the reviews, see what people like, and you'll find out which ones you like, which ones you don't, and go with what fits your lifestyle best. All right, Tom. I I can't believe another year has passed here and uh, we've completed another show. Thanks so much for all that you've brought to us this past year, and we're looking forward to doing it all over again in 2019 as things just continue to evolve. My pleasure, and happy holidays. All right, to you too, sir. Well, that is a wrap on our final show of 2018, and I want to thank everybody who's been a part of it this past season. David Allen Lambert, our chief genealogist with the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org, to Tom Perry, who's always there with uh, some great tips on preservation. All of you with your incredible stories, keep them coming. Share them with us on our Facebook page and, of course, to our patron club members who are so helpful in uh, supporting the show as well. We love having you as a part of it and sharing those bonus podcasts with you and giving you early access to the podcast as well. And hey, and for those of you who have not signed up for our Weekly Genie newsletter yet, 
you can still do that. It's absolutely free. Get online at ExtremeGenes.com or on our Facebook page. Fill out the little block there, and you'll get it immediately. And we give you links to past shows, present shows, a blog from me every week, and links to stories that as a genealogy and family history researcher, you're going to love. Hey, we'll talk to you again in 2019. Thanks for joining us. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. Family.